This is Divine Lifestyles with Tara Magalski. What is a divine lifestyle? Passion, purpose, and living in alignment with your truth. Thank you for tuning into Divine Lifestyles, Transforming Your Life with Purpose. I'm your host, Tara Magalski, and today's guest is a woman who has definitely found her purpose and is on a mission. She is one of the most incredible women I've ever met, a true Renaissance woman. So please welcome the beautiful Ingrid Vandervelt. Oh, thank you thank so you. much for Hi. being here today. <laughs> Hi, Tara. It's so great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my goodness, I'm humbled that you took the time to, out of your insanely busy schedule, you're traveling all over the world, to so just come <laughs> and talk with me today, so thank you. Oh, well, you're, you're doing incredible work, and I, I, uh, a big thing that our whole team talks about is I think it's so critically important that all of us uh, think about how we can pay it forward, so we have to pause and take those moments to, to just do, do our part to help inspire and, and help other women really elevate to our fullest potential. But I think, you know, I will say, Tara, you are amazing because for those people listening to this, this was actually supposed to be a video call. And about five minutes before we started, my EA said it's a video call. And I just got back into the country and I said, I don't have hair and makeup on. And uh, Tara was amazing to say, we'll just do a call. So thank you so much. And, and here we are. We just make it happen. Well, that's right. Make it happen. So let me introduce you to the audience. I'm sure many people listening already know you, but Ingrid, also known as Ivy, is the founder and chairman of Empowering a Billion Women by 2020. And she is also the founder of the new system for building abundance in your business, Mint Her. Previously, she was the first entrepreneur in residence for Dell, where she oversaw entrepreneurial initiatives worldwide, helping to build a $250 million business segment, and founded the $125 million Dell Innovators Credit Fund, the Dell Founders Club, the Dell Center for Entrepreneurs. I mean, you have done so much. She continues to amaze me. She sits on the United Nations Foundation Global Entrepreneurs Council. She's a managing partner for Bell Capital, founding organizer of The Glass Forum, which is a global leadership and sustainable success, and the co-founder of the Billionaire Girls Club. <laughs> she has also created and hosted CNBC's first original primetime series, American Made, reaching over 1 million viewers around the globe. Oh my God. You, I mean, you've been featured everywhere. I'm just going to plug you real quick. NBC, CNBC, Fox, ABC, USA Today, The Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Bloomberg, CNN Money, Fortune Magazine, Fast Company, Inc., and Entrepreneur Magazine. <laughs> Your accomplishments are off the charts. <laughs> Thank you. I've had a lot of help. I've had a lot of help. But as, as you know, you've heard the story. It was not always that way. And, and I just feel so, so enormously blessed to sit here today and uh, and know that you know through hard work and just keeping your focus, anything is truly possible. Yes, it is. I want to get into all of that, but I wanted to start a little bit about your childhood because I read that you had a strong religious upbringing and that you originally thought you were going to be a missionary. So I need to hear about this. And when did you decide <laughs> to go into technology instead? <laughs> well, part of why I'm laughing too is part of why I don't have hair and makeup on is, like I said, I did just fly back into the country, and uh, I grew up in in this amazing family, and we're a very close family. And my parents, I'm I'm trying so hard to get them to move from where they live in Knoxville, Tennessee, and and live right here next to me, so that I can kind of not only keep an eye on them, but we can spend some time together. Uh, but they are in town. They're staying with me for the month. And so I, I'm working out of the house today, hence uh, why I am just heads down with no hair and makeup on. But it was it was really my parents who, um, and I think this is so important to talk about for anybody, especially anyone who, any parents out there, just uh, how critically important it is in terms of what you say to your kids, the environment that you raise your children in. Um, and really the influence that you have over how your children grow up because I grew up in a family that was very religious and spiritual. Uh, we were actually raised Catholic. I'm not a practicing Catholic, um, but I'm, I'm deeply spiritual. I don't start a single day without meditation first, uh, but it was because of my parents and the upbringing that I had and, and sort of this uh, bigger awareness that my parents um, 
really taught us as children that, you know, a big part of why we're here, in fact, the reason we're here uh, on earth is not only to show love to one another, but to really figure out what are our gifts and how do we use those gifts to be in service of others. And that sort of belief system was ingrained in us as a, at a very young age. And combined with that, my parents are huge believers in the power of education. And so they really encouraged us to believe that through hard work and focus and dedication, things that I talk about a lot, mm -hmm. that it would be possible to achieve whatever it was we set out our minds to do. And so, you know, I just, um, as a child, I just had this very deep sense that my purpose was to be a missionary in the world. Mm -hmm. And I often say now that, you know, as I got older and realized I was a pretty effective capitalist, minus a few financial disasters that I <laughs> went through and figured out how to overcome, which I now today know for sure that was just supposed to be part of the journey, but that I was going to be a missionary of a different kind. And that is doing the work that I do today where, um, you know, my calling really is to take all of the things that I've learned in my own career and continue to learn and really leverage those to pay it forward to other women, to help women around the world really live to their fullest potential as leaders and entrepreneurs and realize that financial freedom and abundance is very much something that is available, doable, and possible for them. So that's, that's kind of how it brought, came full circle, if you will. Yeah, I was, you said it before I got to say it, but I, you are a missionary because your work is your mission and really God put those desires in your heart. So you really are, you're just doing it in a new, the new way, in, well, a, in, in a new I, cutting edge way. I love that you talk about divine lifestyles because I truly every single day and our whole team knows this, um, it's a very sort of spiritually driven, purpose driven team. And things happen in our business and opportunities with these women around the world. And there's no other way to describe what happens other than to say it truly is a divine um, intervention, if you will. I mean, the whole thing is divinely written, and it's just our job to be good shepherds of that calling and kind of stay out of our own way and, and make sure our ego doesn't get in the way of, of what we're trying to do, because that always kind of creates little hiccups. So. Yes, yes. And, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about meditation um, in a few minutes, but through meditation, that's where I was able to hear very clearly um, that I was to create divine lifestyles. And for years, I had no idea what it meant. So um, I want to talk a little bit more about that later. But mm -hmm. when I heard you speak at the She Summit, you shared something really powerful with the audience. And I'd love it if you could share more about the time in your life when you were living out of your car. Yeah, and, and thank you so much for picking up on, on that as well. I think, um, you know, it's interesting because it, it wasn't until just a few years ago I was literally in the green room about to walk on stage to talk to about 2,000 women. And the people behind the stage were saying, we're so excited you're here. And of course, I was thrilled to be there. And this woman said, she said, Inger, we really are so happy. And she said, you know, um, the only thing, though, is, you know, you're, you're so successful. Uh, you know, at, at the time that I did that particular speech, I was running the global initiatives at Dell. I was overseeing a $250 million fund, uh, building billion-dollar sort of initiatives. Um, so really big stuff and wonderful things. But I was so glad that she she – paused both of us for a minute because she said, you know, with all your success, she said, there are so many women out there who they can't wait to hear from you, but they're just trying to figure out how do they build their bakery or how do they build their t-shirt company? And I'm just wondering if there's any stories you can share that might help, you know, kind of relate you to, to where a lot of these women are. And I hugged her and I told her, thank you so much for saying that because now I've reached the point in my life where it's beyond time for me to really share that journey of what it took to get to where I am today. Because as wonderful and great as, as everything is and you know seems and all of that, um, the reality is it wasn't always that way. And in fact, it was after my third venture. So not even my first, not even my second. It was after my third venture. And by the time I was on to my third venture, 
by the way, I, I had worked so hard as a technology entrepreneur, which was my background, to um, prove that I could be a good CEO, a good entrepreneur, because there weren't women at the time running these tech companies. And this isn't that long ago, it was like 15 years ago. But in any case, um, so I, I started my third venture, and the long story short of it was I was trying so hard to once again prove myself um, and believe that I could make this idea happen. And I wasn't surrounded by great mentors at that time. And I thought I knew how to do it. And my ego was getting in the way in terms of I wasn't letting sort of the divine calling come through. Instead, so I was missing a lot of little signals that were going on as I was trying to build this venture, which would have otherwise told me, hey, maybe it's time to make a pivot and shift. Mm -hmm. So I just kept pushing and I pushed so hard. Um, I literally lost everything. I lost the company. I lost my home. The only thing I had was my car and uh, I had cats at the time. I had two yeah. cats. So it was myself, whatever clothes I could fit in my car, my cats. and. Um, it was devastating. I, I literally found myself in my car. And I often say, you know, I know, and I've shared a little bit about my family. I know I could have gone home to my parents, but honestly, at that stage in my life, I had worked so hard to prove myself and, and to believe I was worthy that I was so embarrassed and humiliated that I had messed up so badly. I didn't want anybody to know. And had it not been for a girlfriend of mine, Alexis Ferguson, and I always say today, everybody needs an Alexis in their life. Mm -hmm. But she, she saw what was going on, and she saw I was in my car, and uh, Alexis said, Ingrid, you can come and live with me and her roommate at the time. Nobody needs to know what's actually happened. And she said, just take all the time you need. And she goes, you know, do what Mary Kay Ash said, fake it till you make it when you're ready go back out again. And all I wanted to do for a period of time, literally, was drink a lot of wine and sleep all day long. I was so depressed. Mm -hmm. And I just, um, through divine intervention, again, truly, I realized that I had a, a choice to make in my life, that um, being broke and homeless and having lost everything and lost my confidence and being completely embarrassed and humiliated, that could be what I was going to be for the rest of my life. Or... I could really look at that as, wow, so what if someday I become the global public person creating worldwide impact that I dream of being, and I can look back at this and say, you know, I can meet anyone wherever they are at from anywhere in the world and authentically be able to connect because I know what it's like when you've lost everything. And thank God. Uh, that really divine spirit just sort of took over at that point and, and that is the choice that I made and so from that point on through a lot of hard work and just taking baby steps surrounding myself with positive people who believed in me and, and encouraged me during a time in my life when I didn't even believe in myself that that gave me the support system to be able to take those baby steps forward and begin to rebuild and, you know, we look at where we are today and I think, oh my gosh. So I tell people, mm -hmm. get yourself an Alexis in your life and mm -hmm. surround yourself with amazing, I always say a circle of five, you being one of them. So four other people who uh, authentically know what's happening in your life and it's a safe, confidential place where they, they too are aspiring to do big things in the world, but you can come together um, and support one another, especially during those those incredibly difficult times when you think uh, there is absolutely no light at the end of the tunnel. And, and I don't want to go through it again. Thank mm -hmm. God. I, I, I don't believe it. I, it's far in the rear view mirror now, but I do thank God every day for, for that experience for sure. Yeah, it's very interesting. I have my legacy statement right in my office that I look at every day it's kind of a part of my code of conduct. And those days when I feel that I don't know what I'm doing, I go right back to that statement just to get the motivation that I need to, to press on for the day. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, Tara, you bring a you you really pull up a great point because one of the things that has been 
certainly very critical to my own success as well, is a few years ago I sat down and wrote Daily Guiding Principles. And it's a three-page like um, overview of, like, I'll read this. I'll probably look at it once a week or so now. But definitely in those moments where I feel confusion, I go back to that. And, and, it, and the things that are on it are things like, did I tell my husband I love him? Uh, did I tell my family I love them? Um, have I have I shared with my team members how appreciative I am of them? Have I worked out today? Did I meditate today? Did I take care of my skin? Did I eat right? Did I drink well? You know, so it's not rocket science stuff. It's the things that really bring you back to your core of okay, these are the things I need to do that keep me solid and grounded and focused and connected, if you will, to. Um, divine spirit for sure. Absolutely. I, it was my boyfriend's idea to create a code of conduct and it has been the number one guiding principle in my life every day just to get up and read and just read it so I get very clear, okay, this is why I'm doing this. These are my principles. This is my core values. It's a really good way to shift your mindset first thing in the morning if you're feeling stressed like you have to do a million things. Mm. Um, it's really amazing. So. Of course you have that because I noticed that every successful person has an amazing morning ritual. So I was going to ask you that later, but let's just get into that now. What does your morning ritual look like? So my morning ritual is um, I don't let my feet touch the ground before I've meditated. And when I meditate, um, the question that I ask every single day is, what do you need me to hear today? I literally just pose that question, what do you need me to hear today? And I just sit with that and I just listen and intuitively, um, you know, invite what I understand and what I hear to, to come in. And uh, it's interesting because I, I will often tweet out um, in meditation today and I'll, I'll put it on Twitter and Facebook and it's got a little following now, it's really neat. Uh, but it's, it's <laughs> what I hear every day. So I start my day that way. And then um, from there, I will usually come into my home office and I'll just make sure, you know, is there anything from our overseas teams uh, that they, you know, anything that they really need a quick turnaround on, I'll just do a quick check. Uh, and then from there, I put on my clothes and ideally head straight to the gym. And I go to the gym five to six days a week. I really, really, uh, that's so important to be spiritually, mentally, and physically fit. And then from there, uh, once I've done that, I, I go on with my day. There are days that I don't get to go straight to the gym. I end up um, having to take a few calls, and then I'll, I'll work to carve out some time sort of late morning to go, and, and then I come back and continue on with my, my work for the day. So, yeah. And... Uh, that that's sort of a standard day in Austin, Texas. But I will say, I spend so much of my time on the road, and I follow that same ritual on the road um, as well. So yeah, yeah, wonderful. Now you had huge ambitions right out of school, knowing that you wanted to create a billion dollar company. Can you talk a little bit about making the impossible possible with tools, technology, and resources? Yeah, and, and thank you for, for bringing that up because I heard something many years ago that um, I think was, was a big part of what inspired me to come straight out of school, not knowing what I was doing and just deciding, you know, I came out of business school at a time when the internet was booming and I was in Austin, Texas, and there was this young guy named Michael Dell who was, you know, building a billion dollar company out of the trunk of his car. And I thought, you know, if he can do it, I can do it too. and Part of that, I think, uh, was something I heard, which was it's almost easier to go for the really big audacious goals than it is to go for the little ones. So why not just go for what it is you really mm -hmm. want to do? And worst case, you know, if you don't totally get there, you're still going to go far beyond <laughs> where you would otherwise would have gone. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, so I just, I really uh, believe in that, and, and I now know for a fact, I mean, definitely as um, I've raised money over many years, it's it's so true when you're raising money, it's so much easier to raise $5 million, for example, than it is to raise 50000 
you know, you're going to do 10 times the work for a fraction of what you, you would otherwise do. So I'm a big believer in get your big ideas right. Surround yourself with a great mentor and a great support team. Know your business. So if you're not financially literate, which is why we focus so much on that, um, because I was not when I first started out, but know your numbers, like know what, what it is you're really trying to do and what's the business impact of that. And then how can you use technology to help you get there better, cheaper, faster? And these are all things that we teach at Minter. Mm -hmm. Those are all the critical elements that really play into making the impossible possible. So I, I have certainly been blessed to have a career that I've done things. There are so many firsts, if you will, in my career, like the yes. first DIR at Dell, the first original primetime series for CNBC, um, the, you know, my first patent, but every single time people, there were 99% of the people around me were saying, that's impossible. You're never going to do it. You're never going to do it. And I really figured out the little secret sauce. And like I said, it's, it's the things I just mentioned get a mentor, get yourself surrounded by a group of people, like-minded think people, know your numbers, use technology, and then really invest in yourself in terms of confidence is the number one issue that keeps women from starting growing or scaling anything. Yep. The fast mm -hmm. fastest antidote to that is simply taking action, and we take action when we have mentors, so go get a mentor and make your big dreams happen. We, we need people like you out there. I mean, you being all the listeners to, um, you know, go make those big ideas happen. It's, it's your gift back to the world. And it's those gifts that'll, that'll create a better global sustainable future for all of us. So let's talk a little bit about Mint Her. Tell us a little bit more about the platform and where we can go online and, and join. Thank you. So Mint Her was really the solution to the literally thousands of women asking me uh, for years, you know, how, how I've been asked for years, could I mentor? And I do, you know, I kept thinking I have to have a scalable mentoring solution. I really need to create something that allows me to really help women worldwide. And the answer to that is Mint Her. And what I did with Mint Her, and it's M I N T H E R. So minther.com is the solution to uh, everything that I have used to build all of my businesses successfully is all now served up a la carte in minther.com. So what happens is when people go into Minther, the first thing that we offer there is something called Minther Mastermind. So all of the things that took me 20 plus years to realize as part of the good old boys club and being an entrepreneur and then a Fortune 50 executive and an investor and sitting on both sides of the table, all those things that nobody ever told me I had to figure out on my own, we tell all of that in Mentor Mastermind. So two times a month we do training calls. There's um, all kinds of templates, I mean all kinds of resources there, if you will, for women entrepreneurs to finally very quickly gain access to the real deal information on how you start, grow, and scale a venture. So there's Mentor Mastermind. Then when women want to take the next step, or let's say they come in and they've already got an existing business and they really want to take it to the next level, we have something called Mint, Mint Her Profit. And Mentor Profit is basically where um, we will, this is where we really bridge to help women not only be strong on their financial literacy, but really get excited about it and really see all the ways that they can become wildly you know, successful with their revenue and profitability. So Mentor Profit is a back-end tech system that allows women to plug in their financials and in real time will serve up, here are your areas of opportunity, here are some caution areas, here are areas of concerns, and, and really work with them and coach them through here are things that you can do right now to get you where you want to go over the next 12 months. And so we'll coach and train them through that. And then as women want, you know, we can then provide the bookkeeping, the accounting, like we can handle that whole back end for them, whatever they need. So soup to nuts. And then the final piece of it is all of our mentor services. And this is where businesses that say, you know, gosh, okay, so now we've gone through my financials 
and wow, okay, if I use some of these technology applications, you know, for people who might not be tech savvy, or maybe they are, um, I'm tech savvy, and I don't even know everything out there. And we've got a team of people who it's their job, led by our chief digital revenue geek, to know what are all of <laughs> What are the, all, all the applications that you can simply plug into your website, for example, um, that allow you to automate the process of driving more revenue and profitability? So we've got a whole services side team that will figure out with the business owners uh, what might make sense or not for their business. And then, again, business owners are totally in control. There are no contracts on anything we do. It's jump in. Everything's transparent. Do what makes you feel comfortable. Pay what makes sense for you in terms of work with your budget. We'll work with you on that, and we'll support you as little or as much as you want. Oh, wonderful. So, yeah, yeah. No, thank you. It's, it's really neat. It's like it's everything that I wish I would have had, you know, for the 20-plus years in, in my own businesses. And I, I, you know, again, from a divine standpoint, it's really, well, Ingrid, you know, this is exactly how it was supposed to happen because you were supposed to bring this out and help other women. So yeah, it's great. Love it. And I'm, I, I've checked it out and I'm going to get involved as soon as possible. So thank you for creating this. Basically everything you said, I'm like, I need all of that. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. I, I, it's, I mean, that's the neat thing. It really is one of those, uh, yeah, like I said, I was like, okay, I wish I had it, but, but that was my job. It was to put it together and it's here now and I'm just, I'm so happy and grateful and it's so fun to watch it grow and yeah, it's amazing. Oh, I love it. Now I was watching American Made and you interview, uh, interviewed Howard Schultz, the founder of Starbucks. Yeah. He has this amazing story of coming from the projects and you asked him a really cool question that I want to ask you. Okay. So you asked him, when you don't have the money and when you don't have the background, when you don't have the education, how do you envision yourself from where you are today to where you want to be? And it's interesting because you covered a lot of these points in your TED Talk um, with belief. Well, well, you know. So can you just elaborate a little bit on, on that? Yeah, and that's so neat. And thank you for watching that and pulling that out because um, I don't know that anybody's asked me that question ever. Um, or at least it's been a certainly a long time. So, so thank you. <laughs> I would now say, um, because I, that, that makes me think of a conversation I had with my first mentor when I was first starting out, who was self-made multi-billionaire, grew up so poor, he had holes in his shoes. And I remember asking him, his name was Dr. George Kosmetsky, and I said, how did you ever imagine that you would build multi-billion dollar companies and become a multi-billionaire? And his answer, I've never forgotten it. And he said, Ingrid, it's like my wife, Rania, says. So by the way, amazing men who do great things almost always have this extraordinary visionary woman right along their side, and it's so fun to see. So his wife, Rania, said to him, um, well, George, you just simply need to move the decibel point to the right a few spots, and you'll hit a billion. And that was his answer, and he was totally serious. And I looked at him, and what hit me at such a deep level was, wow, it's almost ourselves. We get ourselves in our own way. It truly can be that simple if you just um, believe that that's possible, surround yourself with like-minded thinkers, and, and stay focused on what it is that you're trying to do. You know, are you going to hit really, really tough spots? Yes. But if you stay focused on what the end goal is, you'll figure out a way to navigate around all of that. And sooner or later, you know, the decimal point will begin to move to the right and you just get there. And, uh, and so I know that it almost seems, um, uh, I mean, it's so oversimplified, but, but I really do think sometimes the biggest things in life truly are that simple. And so I, I would honestly say now as I look back on my career and certainly look forward to where things are going and I watch our own numbers just continue to grow and go and I've, I have a very, very deep sense now that 
this is just my place in the world. My place in the world is in fact to be connected with a billion women, empower a billion women to financial freedom and success. And um, rather than allow the complete fear and craziness of an idea like that overwhelm me, which it does mm -hmm. regularly, I then remind myself that if I don't do it, who is? And if it's not me, somebody else will at some point. So why not it be me? And just move forward, um, again, surrounding myself with great mentors, uh, people, and continue to stay focused on the goal. And I think when you stay focused on the goal, and a way to do that is exactly what you have with your core beliefs that you start your day with and my daily guiding principles, it's those things that when you feel scared and unclear, look at that sheet you put together for yourself and it'll bring you right back to here's where I need to focus my attention. And it makes anything possible. Yeah, absolutely. You do make it sound so easy. Um, <laughs> but out of Empowering a Billion Women, I know that you are well along your way. How many women have you reached so far? Yeah, well, um, in collaboration with Dell, where I spent three years, I teamed up with Dell, in fact, because I knew the only way that I was going to reach that goal was by teaming up with a global technology company. And so I did that, and extraordinary things came out of that. And last year alone, together, we reached over 600 million people. And so it just it's amazing what you can do, again, when you surround yourself with with the right partners. Um, I keep talking about the right mentors, the right support circles, but yeah. the right partners are so critically important to um, figuring out how to create win-win solutions so that together you can move forward and create extraordinary opportunity for everyone involved. Absolutely. Now, when I was watching your TED Talk, you covered three points that I really, really loved. Um, I'd love for you to discuss them. You talked about belief, getting comfortable with the uncomfortable, and my favorite, which was the nine months later, birthing them into manifestation. And as women, this is what we intuitively do. Can you just touch on that a little bit? Don't give away too much because we want to have everyone watch the TED Talk. <laughs> But let's thank tease you. Them a little bit. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, what I'll say on the nine months to to kind of start there is, you know, my husband and I, we we don't have children. We married later in life. We married uh, when we were forty, and we we love children. Um, but it's interesting because I always knew growing up, again, that I was I was going to have a really big family. And it's so interesting what happens as things begin to unfold because I look around and I think, I have a huge family. I have people all over the world now. But my husband and I really have decided that, you know, when you're called to do this kind of work, that this is really my family, my responsibility. And so um, what a traditional view on having a family and kids might be, ours is just a, a, you know, a tweak on that, that our work and our mission is our family. But I say that because it was so interesting when the light bulb went off after I looked at the most important deals in my life or, or the most impactful deals, if you will, from the moment of inception of the idea to the moment that the idea took, if you will, whether that was through a funding or the deal came through, the thing that turned the, the corner and made the, the idea into a real thing, nine months, nine months almost to the day for me personally. And, and, and it continues to happen. It's the most bizarre thing on the one hand, and it's the most divine. Of course, it's that way for me. And it was one of those aha moments where I was like, oh my gosh, you know, being a person of faith and being a person living my life in service, it was really extraordinary to have that aha moment of, again, these, these biggest opportunities in my life have been nine months after birthing or the inception of the idea, if you will. And what that also helped me realize was that for me to accomplish 
what it is that I was setting out to do, for me to do those things that would allow me to leave that legacy that I know all of us want to leave, whether it's creating a business or creating, a, you know, an amazing family or marrying the right spouse, you know, in some form or fashion, we all want to leave our own legacy. And anybody that I know that has left an incredible legacy is a person who has learned to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Because I can assure you that, you know, going through this nine-month gestation period, if you will, of building these ideas, there's a lot of uncomfortableness that comes along with that. A lot of doubt, fear, just being scared, questioning, is this going to happen or not? And the moment that I realized that, you know, part of this process is to be comfortable being uncomfortable. When that aha moment went off in my mind, when that click happened, um, it was a game changer for me. Because now, as I go out into the world, uh, I recognize that if I'm not feeling uncomfortable about something, then I'm probably not on the right path. And that getting comfortable being uncomfortable is part of the journey. And that that journey for me is probably going to take right around nine months until I start start seeing some some real sort of inflection points showing me that that the path that I'm on is is actually the one that's going to lead me to where it is that I've I'm meant to go. That is so cool and I'm going to look into my own life a little bit closer now to see um, I have never thought of it that way. So that's a really great point. I'm going to start to see, is this the same thing happening in my life um, as women because it is just so intuitive. Yeah. So what do you consider to be your biggest achievement so far? I, you know, and thank you so much for asking that question because I honestly would have to say that the the thing that has happened in my own life that I would consider to be my biggest accomplishment or achievement was the moment that I made the choice, I made the decision to 100% hand my life over in the service of what I was called to do. You know, I having I shared with you a little bit about growing up thinking I'd be a missionary and then realizing I was a pretty effective capitalist as I got older <laughs> and I would go out into the world and, and really be sort of a missionary of another kind and that was to be successful as an entrepreneur and create opportunities for for myself, my family, and ultimately the world. But it was so interesting because as I went throughout my career and I look back on things, my ego was always getting in the way. I was always, you know, like my gut would tell me, oh, Ingrid, you know, um, I actually knew as I was growing up that that a turning point for me was really going to be right around when I was 40 years old. And I can tell you when I was in my late 20s running my first venture and it was getting funded and it was like the hot new thing. And my ego was so in the way of just being like, oh, I've got to prove it to myself and everybody else that I can make this happen. And it really was incredible because it was uh, when I was 40 years old um, that I had this true come to Jesus moment of the aha of, you know, really deciding that I was ready to hand my life over 100% into service of what I was called to do. And that was both the most exhilarating and amazing moment of my life. And it was also the scariest moment of my life because at that time, you know, when I went into meditation and asked, what is it that I'm called to do? What do you need me to do? If I had heard, you know, Ingrid, we need you to go down to into the jungles of Uganda and work with the women down there, which I've done, you know, that would have been a pretty tough change for me to have to make. And, and I had promised myself I would do whatever I was called to do. Um, fortunately, or unfortunately, as some people might think, as we work around the clock, but I love it so much. But I, I heard the calling of Empowering a Billion Women by 2020. And after getting over the initial, you know, total shock of that and, and sort of complete self-doubt and craziness of the idea of all of that, um, I gently reminded myself that, you know, from, from this moment forward, I'm 100% into service of of this. And when I eased back into that service based um, knowing, if you will, it's not even mentality, it's just this deep sense of connectedness and knowing, um, all of the answers became very, very clear and of how to do it. And that's, that's when 
truly my life just completely transformed in a way that I just have never, ever um, experienced before. And, and it continues to be this way, and it'll be this way for the rest of my life. So I, it was amazing. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is that is amazing. And I think you had, had mentioned something that things just started to happen. It was effortless. It, it is. And I, I really invite, um, especially, you know, all of listeners here, I know all of us believe that we're called to a higher purpose, whether you're religious or not, or faithful or not, or whatever. We, we all have this deep sense of knowing that we're here for a reason. We're here for a purpose. We're here to leave our mark, if you will. And I invite you, I invite the listeners to gift yourself um, what has truly been the most incredible opportunity in my own life, and that, and that is gifting yourself with the opportunity to truly allow yourself to um, listen to that and to heed the calling and to, to really watch the miracles that, that start happening when, when you do that. And, you know, it's interesting because a lot of people today, um, you know, it, it's so fun to travel around the world and the EBW 2020 family, I mean, it's everywhere. I go anywhere in the world and people are just so happy to see me and so excited about EBW and they're doing their part. And it's interesting because a lot of, um, hardcore business people, if you will, will say, oh, you know, well, how do you guys make money? And is this thing, you know, is it a social venture? Is it a money-making venture? Like, what is it? And what's, what's so amazing is that just like so many people I know who are living this total service-based life, it's like all of a sudden what you're called to do is whatever it is, but it's also the thing that brings you abundance with ease and grace in ways that you would never imagine. Mm -hmm. EBW, you know, I heard a saying years ago, they were like, what's the fastest way to a billion? We'll figure out how you can serve a billion people and charge, you know, a dollar a piece kind of thing. Um, and I, I mentioned that just because I think for people who listen to this who are like I was, um, and I continue to be, I enjoy business, I enjoy making money, I enjoy building, I en I'm very much a capitalist, but it's capitalism from a completely different service-based mentality, and it really is truly amazing how um, opportunities and abundance show up with ease and grace when you truly step into what it is that you're called to do. Wow. Yeah. And let the spirit guide you. And let the spirit guide you. So what piece of advice would you give to a young woman who is struggling to fully step into her power and gain that clarity with her vision? Well, the the first thing that I would do is, um, uh, well, the, the actual first thing, but don't consider this like a top three thing, but the first thing I would do is just just know that welcome to the club. You're just like everybody else. Um, I, I literally just this morning was um, asked to uh, do something for Huffington Post, and they, they wanted to know, you know, what would you tell your 22-year-old self? And the first thing I wrote, the first thing that came out of my mouth was, was chill out, you know? Yeah. And chill out in the sense <laughs> of kind of what those fears, those, um, the excitement of what you dream about, the excitement of, of thinking about the future that you envision for yourself is always met with this sort of equal sense of complete fear and, oh my God, can I make that happen? And just, you know, again, welcome to the club. And if I could offer you one piece of advice on that front, it's going back to what I just said about, you know, the moment that you allow yourself to accept that getting comfortable being uncomfortable is a key part of the process of moving forward towards your dream, that's going to be a major game changer. So it happens to all of us. It happens to me every single day, even now. And, and so once you, you kind of get your mindset into that place, the three things I would recommend are this. Number one, find yourself a mentor. That is the biggest game changer to getting you from where you are today to where you want to go. Um, so definitely find yourself a mentor. Number two is create 
a support system. So I'm a huge fan of the Mohammed Yunus model of Grameen Bank, which is, you know, he, he talks about putting five women together. I put a group, I, didn't, I helped put a group together years ago. Uh, we called ourselves the Billionaire Girls Club. And it's myself and four other like-minded women who, you know, we weren't billionaires, at, nowhere near that, especially back then. And but we were all thinking big. We were all thinking about how we would impact the world. And once a month, we get on the phone with one another, all five of us, um, and we've done it now for, I think, we're in our eighth year. And with total confidence, um, it's a trusted environment. We share with one another what is going on and where we need help. And then we work to help one another. So I would say put a support group together. And then number three, this is going to be a shameless plug, but I promise you <laughs> it's worth it. And that is go to ebw2020.com. Download the app, get involved with the Mint Her Network. The Mint Her Network is the engine that powers the entire EBW 2020 community. There's that there are things on there that you pay for. You can join mastermind groups, all of that. But the EBW 2020 app is free and it matches you. It helps match you with um, women around the world, with mentors around the world, and all of that is free. We we truly set this up to be exactly what myself and the other team members of EBW wish we would have had when we were building and growing our own ventures. And we wanted to make it free and available for everyone to be part of this community. So those would be the three things that I would recommend. Okay, wonderful. And I think you also have a vision board session that you teach as well on there that I wanted to tell everyone listening. That is something that's really powerful. So definitely go online and check that out. But could you tell us a little bit more about the Billionaires uh, Girls Club? Because I know you have an event coming up. Yeah, well, actually, so we've got an event coming up in January, and that's actually hosted by the Ivy Club. So the Billionaire Girls Club is our little group of five, and for many, many years, um, just quietly and confidentially, I've been hosting gatherings, small gatherings for women like the Billionaire Girls Club who are aspiring to, in some cases, go over that million-dollar mark and, in other cases, really build these you know, very fast-growth big companies. And I decided to formalize that effort um, because they've just been so incredibly successful for all the women who are part of it. It's a sisterhood you'll have for life. And so this January, January 16th and 17th in San Antonio, we are hosting uh, the Ivy Club Billionaire Weekend for Women. And I'm doing it uh, in partnership with Sharon Lecter, who's the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Mm -hmm. Think and Grow Rich for Women, Lauren Flanagan. She's one of the top angels in the United States, and my mentor, uh, the self-made multi-billionaire who grew up so poor he had holes in his shoes, and he's going to tell us his rag-to-riches story of how he went from that to becoming a self-made multi-billionaire, creating companies like Clear Channel Communications. His name's Red McCombs. So it's going to be a fantastic weekend, and you can find out about that um, at IngridVanderbilt.com. So I'm... uh, I will, Tara, have to send you a link. Maybe you can share that with your, with all the listeners here. Uh, but I invite, I invite all of you who really want to step it up in 2016 and really join this sisterhood um, to come and join us in in January in San Antonio. It's just going to be an extraordinary event, and and so excited to to get there with everyone. Wow, it sounds amazing. I'm definitely going to look into coming, so you'll be hearing from me shortly. Um, But I wanted to just uh, talk about a few more things. And I know that you were in the process of writing your first book, and that's about your life and EBW's mission. And I know that you're still currently working on it, but where can the audience go and grab a copy when it's ready? And tell us a little bit more about the book. Oh, thank you so much. Well, all of my book, I mean, the, the book, and I, I have multiple books, mm-hmm. but they're all, everybody, come to IngridVanderbilt.com. That really is, um, it's my personal site. It's um, my agency, if you will. This is where I uh, have birthed EBW out of that. I, um, you know, it's where, where we're talking about the book. Um, that's where you can kind of follow this journey to impacting a billion women. And so there are actually two books that are on on the um, 
drawing board at the moment. One is called Making the Impossible Possible, which is uh, really the subject of my TED Talk that um, you know has just been so, so wonderful to see the response there. And it truly is about how do you realize those dreams and goals that you have for yourself that 99.9% .9 of the people around you, even if you're surrounded by amazing people, will say, you know, that's... Thank you for tuning in and make sure you subscribe to this channel to get your weekly fix for all you spiritual gangsters. Any questions or comments, go to my site at taramagalski.com, drop me a note, I'd love to hear from you, and stay tuned for next week. I got the good stuff.